And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Ray Shasho Show. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Each week, Ray spotlights in-depth interviews with legendary and -and up-and-coming authors and music artists. Ray also features the movers and the shakers of the music and publishing industries and suggests important methods for getting the most out of your public relations and marketing needs. Please welcome music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ray Shasho, broadcasting from BBS Radio, and welcome to the show. But we spotlight legendary and up-and-coming music artists and authors brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or visit www.publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Chuck Negron, formerly of the Three Dog Night, has been captivating audiences for over five decades with his iconic vocals, unique humor, and brilliant storytelling. His catalog of hits are timeless and appeal to music fans of all ages. 1967, Negron became a founding member of Three Dog Night, a vocal trio having roots in R&B, rock and roll, and urban doo-wop, creating a style of music that was totally new and unique. The role was introduced to Negron in Three Dog Night 1969 by the band's first million seller, One. Driven by Negron's solo lead vocals on four million selling singles, three number one records, one which topped the charts for six weeks, Toy to the World, five top five hits and seven top 40 hits. He put and kept Three Dog Night on the charts for six years. He performs upwards of 70 shows a year, giving audiences the opportunity to hear his impressive volume of hits, plus an exciting repertoire of new songs. He will also be announcing the release of multiple special projects in 2018, all while celebrating 26 years of sobriety after an infamous and very public life or death battle with addiction during his three dog night years. On June 30th this year, Negron released the album he's always wanted to release with daughters Charlie and Annabelle, also featuring three previously unreleased Three Dog Night tracks. The album titled Negron Generations is available now at chucknegron.com and all digital music outlets, including Amazon.com. The unreleased tracks were recorded by the band in the mid-1970s, prior to their breakup in 1976. The letter, Save Our Ship, and This Is Your Captain Calling, feature that iconic sound that could only come from original vocalists of Three Dog Night, Corey Wells, Danny Hutton, and Chuck Negron. Chuck, Charlie, and Annabelle created a unique harmony blend that only a family can. The sisters' lead vocals on the Ronettes, Be My Baby, Do I Love You, are compelling. The evocative account of how Chuck Negron went from the height of worldwide fame and success to the depths of delusion, despair, and almost death is documented in hundreds of new photographs, and the 11 new chapters of Three Dog Night 4th Edition. The journey is very sad in places, uplifting in others, as Negron tells it, like it was. If you like the music of Three Dog Night, you will be captivated by the honest narratives about what was happening behind the scenes shared by Chuck Negron. The book is available very, very soon, December 5th, in a worldwide release with all pre-sale copies signed by Chuck. Order your copy now at www.checknegron.com. Chuck's lead vocals featured on many of the band's iconic hits, including Joy to the World, Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog, One is the Only His Number, Easy to Be Hard, Joy to the World topped the charts for six weeks, Three Dog Night had 21 consecutive top 40 hits, 12 gold albums, over 50 million albums sold. Chuck left the band in 1985. Chuck Negra will be performing on the critically acclaimed Happy Together Tour in the summer of 2018, along with the Turtles featuring Flo and Eddie, Gary Puckett and Union Gap, Mark Lindsay, former lead singer of Paul Revere and the Raiders, the Association, and the Cal, Cal-, Cal- Sills. Please welcome singer, songwriter, composer, author, and the legendary voice of Three Dog Night, Chuck Negra, to the Ray Shasho Show. Hello, Chuck. Hey, man, that was quite a mouthful. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you know, we're done, when, huh? When, <laughs> yeah, when I, when I was writing that, I uh, didn't realize it was so long. <laughs> well, thank you for writing that, by the way. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> First if of all, I want to say... I have to tell you, none of it's true. None of it's true. I made it all up. Well, it doesn't matter. It sounded good. <laughs> good, 
good year. <laughs> Last time we talked, we chatted in 2013, and I think I was interviewing wow. everybody from the Happy De- Happy Together tour. And uh, it, you know, it's a great show. I've covered it many, many times at Ruth Eckerd and Clearwater. It, you know, and I'm happy you're you're aboard again for 2018. Yeah, you know, it's fun, and I, it's kind of you get to be like family. You know, you spend so much time together on the bus. Uh, you know, the majority the majority of the time is spent. Uh, Traveling, so you know my bus is uh, the association and uh, the councils and uh, and the, the the crew, which of course we we've, we've always been with the crew and my girlfriend Amy. So you know it's like really uh, it's like going and seeing fa- old family again. It's nice. Oh, it's a great show. It's an awesome show. I recommend everybody to see it. And uh, I, I'm excited you guys are coming back again. First of all, Chuck, I want to say how's your family in Puerto Rico, man. How did they uh, weather the oh, storm? you know what? Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're okay. Boy, God, that was terrible. I mean, they were out without electricity forever. I know. And, um, you know, it just it just goes to show what, uh, you know, what nature can do. And, you know, you, you can prepare only so far, and then, the, you know, the rest you're, is out of your control. But thank you for asking. Yeah, they, they are okay. You know, I, I never realized Puerto Rico was uh, that vulnerable, you know. I, I'd never been there, but I never thought that they were that vulnerable to, a, a you know, a big hurricane like that. I didn't think the power would go out for that long, you know. Yeah, well, you know what, there, you know, it's out there in the middle, you know, it's an island, so, it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, just, yeah, it came through and just tore things, uh, tore things up. Uh, you know, it affected a lot of, you know, a lot of people. I was watching a show. And one of the people on the show couldn't leave, and their family was, you know, kind of their, the house was torn apart, and so it affected a lot of people. It did. And you're you're very well known down in Puerto Rico because uh, you were inducted into their Hall of Fame, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I uh, I paid them. I had to I had to, pay them <laughs> to do it. <laughs> you know, but yeah. you know, I find that works a lot. You know, <laughs> people just like money. Exactly. But back in the payola days, it really worked. For you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the check. I appreciate that. <laughs> you got it, man. Will you have me on again? I'll give you a little more. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, man, I'm very sorry about Corey Wells. Um, you know, very, uh, you know, he's a he was a great singer. You know, part of a great band, and uh, I know that hurt you very much to, to lose him. You know, we were kids together, for God's sakes. Yeah. You know, we were in our 20s. We, you know, we, we came from just all trying, 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 you know, to, to try to, to, you know, find some success, earn a living in a business that we loved. And, you know, we did it together. We, you know, we shared so much. And, and um, you know, there were so many years I just... You know, didn't didn't see him, or you know, and then uh, luckily a couple of years before he died, I reached out to him uh, um, and I sent him a song I had, I had written, a song called "I'm Sorry," and right. um, he wrote he wrote me back, and you know, and we started corresponding, so we kind of made it on our amends. But yeah, Corey was the best singer I have ever worked with. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy not only could he sing, but he he just could just could Amy. He could just perform. I mean, this guy, this guy could perform like anybody's business. I mean, yeah. it was the first show that we ever did together, this guy started dancing all over the stage, and Danny and I are looking at that one another going, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> 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 he was so good, and we, we really had to adapt to adjust to what he was doing, and that that was the basic energy that started the whole excitement of Three Dog Night. Actually, it was Corey Wells. Uh, we yeah. did it because, you know, we had to keep up with him. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it was, he was just, you know, one of, and a nice, you know, he was a nice guy. He was a simple right. guy. Um, you know, he didn't go out to the clubs. I mean, once in a while, go to blues club and go up and jam, but, you know, he didn't hang out with the girls. He didn't do any drugs. You know, we'd be coming home at 5 in the morning, to, you know, after a, out all night, and he'd be sitting uh, in a bass boat connected to a limo. 
You know, he, he was going fishing. Right. You know, so he was just a, he, his own man, and uh, yeah. he didn't let any of that stuff affect him. And then we lost Jimmy, who was really kind of the music of the melody of the right. band. He was so melodic and, and probably the nicest guy, one of the nicest people, except for Floyd, that I've ever met. Floyd was just, really, actually, Floyd and I are going to lunch. We're going to lunch today, so. Oh, awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing him. Isn't Floyd from Canada originally? Yes, yes, Floyd is from Canada. He's from Canada, it's yeah. It's funny, the first time we saw Floyd, we went, we went to a club, and he was his band was backing the Drifters. Right. And, you know, it was a real, it was a black club, and it was, you know, it was, you know, it's, it, it was a black club. It was, you know, it was an R&B place, so. Right. You know, when we met him, just, I guess, our impression, he was a big, big guy, and, mm-hmm. you know, was different, and we went, hey, hey man, we, we'd like to talk to him. He goes, yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Canadian, which we, you know, just, he was just a special guy. He is a special guy. He's a good drummer. Very good drummer, and he um, he did he did some stuff with Cheech and Chong too, didn't he? He did yeah, some well, uh, um, yeah. Uh, Chong, uh, Tommy w- married Floyd's sister. Floyd's sister, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Floyd's sister. So, so Ray Don Chong is 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 Floyd's niece. Oh wow! How about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We always used to say, "Hey, bring her around." He went, "No way." <laughs> <laughs> No way. I don't blame him. <laughs> you, you know, one guy I don't understand is Danny Hutton. You know, and I know you you might stick up for him, but, you know, the guy, he's got some issues there. You know, dealing like a third wheel. I know you've mentioned that in an interview, like a second or third wheel. Uh, he doesn't mention you in a lot of interviews. Uh, I don't even think the website, the Three Dog Night website, has anything about you. What is his problem? <laughs> you know, you know. I think you know, it's, very, it's very strange, Danny. The, my theory on the whole thing, and I've seen it happen with guys that are influential in starting bands. You know, like right. they're the first guy, and they they help put it, you know put it together. They're usually the weakest link. Right, right. So Danny, he ran the band. I mean, he, you know, we all respected him. He was the guy, and. You know, I had no problem with him, you know, help picking the producer and talking to the record company because, you know, right. he, he was cool, you know. I didn't want to do it. So when we started doing our thing and started touring, every day someone else stepped up. And it you start realizing the only guy that hasn't been able to step up is Danny. Right. Because you know what? He just not He's not getting as good as we are. Right. You know, we were all equal until we started learning our trade, and then, it cha- you know, it changed. Like, Corey went right to the top, you yeah. know, and then I followed. And, it, you know, and then it was guys in the band, and then Danny was in there somewhere. So he went from a band that was his to becoming kind of a background stinger. And right. I, in his defense, that must have been devastating. Mm-hmm. You know, and no one delegated that or relegated that. I mean, he, you know, he, it just, was, that's how, you know, how it happened. And right. he really didn't have the ability to pick great songs. So, you know, Corey and I are picking one hit after another and finding great new writers. And Danny, uh, you know, he didn't even pick Liar. Jimmy Greenspoon picked it for him. And the mm-hmm. first song he did pick, which was, you know, down in the mid-70s, was Black and White, which was fantastic. So, you know, yeah. he, he had a hard time. He had a lot of baggage. So when he finally got control of the band... He was totally unwilling to let it go. And, mm-hmm. and, and to let it go, he knew it would have happened again if he brought me and Floyd back. Yeah. Because it would just happen again because he just couldn't compete. Right. So, you know, so that you know, that's the baggage, you know, he takes. And, you know, I hope he's, hey, Floyd. I hope he's, I hope. <laughs> Floyd just walked in. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you look good, man. Do I'm doing an interview. Let me do one, too. Whoever <laughs> You hear it? Get, Floyd, get Floyd on the on the phone. No problem. <laughs> Hello. Is this Floyd? Hello. Yeah. Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> Who am I speaking with? This, this is Ray from the Ray Shasho Show. We're on the radio. Oh, very good, Ray. How you doing? Hey, man. You're a great drummer, dude. Good. And uh, we miss you. 
Yeah, I miss you too. You know, I want to get back in the band and start playing some more. I know. I, I, we, we need to hear you again. You know, you, 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 we, we yeah. need all these uh, great drummers back. And I know you did a lot of stuff right. with uh, Cheech and Chong. And uh, yeah, uh huh. What, what are you What are you doing lately? I've been. I play at church every Sunday, but I've done some little recording up there with a little couple of little groups, but nothing. You know. Right. You know, I'm on Chuck's album, latest album, which is a wonderful. Isn't that a wonderful album? It is. Have you it heard really it? Is. Yeah, it, it's wonderful. It really album. is. You guys got to do. Need to hear. You guys got to do some stuff together, you know, and and incorporate some some other people, and, and uh, you yeah, know, put well, something together. I'm ready together. to do it. Yep. Well, listen. Well, I'll put you back on with Chuck now. Nice talking to you. Good talking to you too, Floyd. It, it, we miss you, man. All right, now. Take you care. Too. You know, Floyd. Floyd is mind blowing. He's in a thong. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice man. Good guy. He's just a good man. Yeah. You, I, you said you were going to put a the uh, a Beach Boys Three Dog Night me- mega concert together back then. That didn't happen. So, you know, if, if he ever Danny ever gets in, into a uh, his senses, how about a Grand Funk Railroad Three Dog Night tour? <laughs> <laughs> well, that that would have been good. Yeah. So, you know, that would have been good. I like Grand Funk. Actually, we worked. Uh, with, uh, with Mark, the guitar player. Oh, Mark. Yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark Carter, yeah. He does quite a show. He he's he's awesome. I, I love Mark. Hard. I love Mark. Yeah, he's a very, very talented guy. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, but, you know, as far as at this point with Joe Shermie and Jimmy Greenspoon and uh, Corey Wells gone, I mean, you know, there's no sense in even, you know, yeah. doing it. And it's kind of a very, very sad that Danny was able to put it off and get away with it. So it's, you know, because then the CAA wanted to do a tour. And this is before Fleetwood Mac did theirs. Right. And they said, you guys got to get off the road. I'll get three dogs night off the road. You get off the road. Do for a year. Do, we'll, we'll, get, we'll woodshed you for a year in rehearsals. And blah, blah. This is what they did with Fleetwood Mac. And right. uh, Danny wouldn't do it. Yeah. He's got issues. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. You know, but, but I hear he looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they, you know, maybe you should just, you know, call it quits because, you know, you only got, uh, you got him and uh, the guitar player, Michael, right? Awesome. Is, yeah, well, your... I don't understand. It's like karaoke. I mean, he only yeah. sang two songs. It's like so a cover the rest band. It's karaoke night, you know. Because <laughs> you know, we got these other guys singing the songs. You know, it's like uh, at any rate, you know, God, God, you know, God bless him. He's you know, he's got a family, and yeah, you right. know, he's not very attractive. So I mean, he's got a little. <laughs> you know, That's funny. And, and and he's got the, he's got these glands. He smells. <laughs> I, I like how you're getting your shots in here. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything bad about the jerk. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I, I've heard this a lot. Of, a lot of the guys I interview, you know, talking back and forth. I, I'm I you not know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh That's man, funny. you got to do some stand up. Tell him if you see him. I was with his girlfriend. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, had an affair with his girlfriend. Just tell him that. All right. <laughs> You, you know you're you're very appreciative when when you get your start. I know you thanked uh, John Kane Steppenwolf. I guess they they came in and uh, got you on a bill with them in in, in the oh, in, man, back they, in the day. They, they did it for us. Yeah, we opened for them when they were doing you know fifteen thousand seat places. And man, if I was him, I would have fired us. I mean, we stole the the show every night. And he just said, "Look, I do what I do, and uh, I'm not worried." And you right. know. So he he was a yeah, real, you know, solid kind of, you know, kind of a, you know, he didn't kind of socialize with us. But then none of us were into handcuffs and whips. Oh, right. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've interviewed John. He's a, he's a good guy. Does, oh, does John's a, a good guy. Oh, yeah, yeah John's a pro. He's been doing it for a long. Yeah, yeah. He looks great. Yeah, I mean, he does he look really, good. Yeah. Yeah, he, he and his wife. I mean. That woman's been with him, you know, from back in the day. I mean, how many people are still with their wife? It's amazing. That's right. That's amazing. You're right. 
I agree with you. Yeah. And, and yeah. you you actually... I thought um, the time I'd be with his wife. <laughs> you actually you helped Elton John, and uh, he didn't really give you guys much thanks, did he? You know what? I don't understand that, because when, when we, if we did Elton's song on the... Uh, Second album, and it was he had never, no one had ever recorded any of his music. Right, we were the first, the first band, and in London, him and Bernie followed us everywhere. Yep, and they played them uh, their music. I mean, your song, "Take Me to the Pilot." We said, "Send this stuff; it's great." And you know, they were really just, really looking for a break and looking for some help, and and we gave it to them. Yep, and uh, so I didn't get it because he really loved the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, he loved the band, and so I don't get that he doesn't say anything, and really never has. Yeah. So you know, but that, it is what it is. But I'm su- I'm just surprised. Well, was that uh, Lady Samantha or your song? Which was the first song you? No, you did. The first was Lady Samantha. Lady then Samantha. Then we got your song, right? And we all decided that this song this song's just a little too good. I think he's done it. I, don't, I think this is going to be a single for him. You know, maybe we should leave it alone. Right, and uh, Danny wanted to do it, so uh, you know, it became an album cut. You know, the best song written in the last twenty years, Danny managed to make it an album cut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the. <laughs> you, you, you were actually the first guy that. <laughs> you laughing with Floyd back there, or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, what is yeah, Floyd's. Floyd's just going, what is, don't say that, Chuck, because you know, Floyd's a nice guy. You're a funny you know, guy. I, I, I saw a YouTube video you did with, I think it was your dog, making fun of your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Do a yeah, lot of funny things on, you On uh, you did a lot of live oh, yeah, stuff yeah, on well, Facebook. You know, my, girlfriend, my girlfriend erases them all, my manager, erases them all. She <laughs> says, that's just too, con- it's too controversial. I said, it's a dachshund. Give me I a break. Funny. You, you, you were talking, I don't know if you were talking politics or something on Facebook once. You were, we're Facebook friends. And everybody just got on your case about something. I remember that. Remember, do you remember yeah, talking well, you about know what, You know what, what it is? And, the, and actually, I, I did it to prove a point, and then I just had to get out of there. But I know. Basically, the people don't understand that we, we have gotten to the point we do not tolerate other points of view. No one wants to learn. Right. No one wants to discuss intelligently. Right. All they want to do is win yep. and shut the other people up. I mean, the First Amendment in colleges is about, you know, I mean, freedom of speech is shut down because yeah. they just stop anyone they don't yeah. want. You're right. And since most of the colleges are liberals, the, 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 te- the professors, yep. that's the point of view. Yep. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying liberals, conservatives, I'm not picking either side, but what I'm saying right now is... It's very sad because these kids are not getting the opportunity to understand really what the First Amendment is, right. so everyone right. can speak. You know, right? I agree with you 100. percent Yep, I- I'm on your side, by the yeah, way. Anyway, so I know where you're headed. It's <laughs> kind of a sad, a sad time, and then we have a president that is, you know, hated. The, the, you know, the, so you know, it's, it's a sad situation where it's just constant attacks on on a man, and and uh, you know. You know, it's a shame if it is. He's very, he's just not very articulate. He's definitely not smooth. You know, so it's, uh, you know, he kind of sets himself up. Well, he's a businessman, you know. He's good at it. He's good yeah, at being exactly. a business guy, you know. And I, yeah, th- well, I think that's what York, the country needed. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You know, hopefully, hopefully he'll come up with something right. that, uh, that, you know, everyone goes, okay, good. He did something good. You know, hopefully. Right. We'll exactly. See. We'll see. I doubt it. He'll probably do something great, and they still won't acknowledge him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's just the way it is. Pretty well low. He's loathed. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I love his daughter. Yeah. He's got a beautiful wife. So nice. <laughs> I tell you that. <laughs> she's really pretty, isn't she? <laughs> oh, really? I think she's really lovely. Yeah, she is. I like her. <laughs> she's the person I love. <laughs> you want a picture? I'll send you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> my people, my people talk to your people. Who exchange pictures. <laughs> the Melania and the That's funny. No, no, she's. You know what? I don't know why they they pick on her. She's lovely. I know, I know. They made a big deal about her wearing high heels. Remember that? Yeah, where, where, I, I, you know, come on. 
Yeah, I mean, come give her a break. I don't get it. Yeah, she yeah, looks pretty anyway. cool by his side. You know, I think yeah. she looks pretty cool. Yeah, so do I. So do I. I think you know. Well, anyway, you know, it's just kind of a, a weird, you know, a weird time. It is. It's a very anyway. So uh, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking. Uh, I've got some special pictures of myself that maybe, maybe we could get out there and send out to the world and kind of flex some muscles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for your your next post on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah. Or or live oh, live event. Oh, I did one last week, and they all they all attacked me again. I know, I know. I was defending uh, you, by uh, the way. You know the kneeling deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. The football. You know, I don't I don't watch football said, anymore you know, because I, of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people, you know. Yeah. You know, I just you know the the think the bottom line. This is the workplace. That's you know, right. If anyone went to work and started kneeling around, it'd be fine. Exactly. Exactly. See, you were brought anyway, up right like me. Well, you know, it's, it's a bit, you know, it's a bigger issue, and you know, hopefully, yep. uh, it's resolved. Let's pick a better time, a better venue. Right? Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't, don't do it during, during the you national know anthem. Pow- that, you know what would really be powerful? What's that? If they go out, they, they they go out, they get on, you know, they get on the field, they get ready for the kickoff, and they take a knee. If that's yeah. what they really want to do, it then. Do it then, right? You know, hold up the game. You really get some press. I agree with you. Yeah, they're pissing off a lot of people, you know. Yeah, well, because of disrespecting, uh, you know, men that died. That's right. That's right. Chuck, one thing I I hope Three Dog Night gets in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because it, it's way overdue. I don't get that. You know, I mean, I I mean, every Hall of Fame there is is based on figures, on accomplishments. Right. Right. And this is based on if I like you. If I like you, yeah, you know, pretty much. Cachet. And it's like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I mean, you know, the, the, not, you know, I know there are people out there that like the Velvet Underground, so, you know, I don't want to, to offend them, but the Velvet Underground never even had a top 100 record. I know. I they know. never got on the charts. They were in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that, be- so what did yeah. they do? What How about do? the guys like the Beastie Boys? I don't get that. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they didn't well, they didn't pay their dues at the beginning. What are they? What are they considered? Rap or hip hop? I don't know what uh, they're considered. Who knows? It's not rock and roll. I can tell yeah, you that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. This things aren't rock and roll. Right. I, I was a top forty DJ back in the late seventies, so I under, I understand it all. You know, I. I know what, you know, when you have a hit, you have a hit in the top 40. You guys should have been in the first round, you know, just based on stats. Yeah, we haven't even come up. I don't think we have even come up. No, you haven't, which is ridiculous. I, you know, how is, how is that possible? I don't know. You know, oh, well. Uh, you know, I, well, you know it's, it's, I've kind of, my thing was for my family. My yep. mother and father, I mean, my sister, I knew that that would be so important to me. When they, when they passed, I didn't care anymore. Because, you yeah. know, I don't care. You know, I mean, if I get in, you know, that, you know that's nice. If I, you know, if I don't, hey, you know, I did the work. I'm comfortable with what we did. So, you know, so right now I've kind of let it go. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm not going to hurt any of them. Yeah. Well, eventually I anyway. think you'll get in. I really do. Well, that would be nice. I just hope yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> you look, no, I mean, Chuck. I you look good. great, man. You, you, how you feeling? You feeling all right? I mean, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. Well, you know, I, I, I'm coming up on sixty. Pretty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you look forty, so <laughs> yeah, you look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, you know. I actually, I pull, my, I tie my skin back on the back of my head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like they used to do in the 30s and 40s, how they they, they pull it back and then tape it. <laughs> they did that. Did you know that? Did they really do that? <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. They, did. they took the skin, they, yep. they put a t- the little tape on it, and then they put it back, and then they taped right. it behind the head. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah uh, they I, could put it behind the hair. So that's what you yeah. do, huh? Yeah, yeah. I I know so, they used know, to tape. Yeah, they used to know, tape years back. <laughs> yes, they did that with Bing Crosby. That's right, and uh, I think uh, yeah. Clark Gable. Yeah. I he think he pinned, pinned was his ears. Prototype now. for uh, for uh, that, that that elephant that flew. Dumbo. <laughs> yeah, Dumbo. Yeah. 
<laughs> Chuck, we got to talk a little bit about what you got going on. You got Three Dog Nightmare Fourth Edition, which includes a hundred of new photographs and eleven new chapters. It's a great book. I've read it. Uh, my wife has read it. She's a nurse. She appreciates it. I got. I got a. My favorite cousin of all time died of drug addiction. Oh. Um, so I understand exactly. I got a, my best friend committed suicide. So it's it's very very dear to my heart to, to read this story and, and have a positive something positive come out of it. And God bless you for yeah, writing it. Well, man. well, thank you. Well, I'm I'm, I'm I'm thank God I was I got it you know got it right. They, uh, it's it, it's required reading and, and several uh, rehabs. Yep. Um, it's it's you know done really really well for people with 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 problems and that's you know that's what I want. I wrote it for, so I'm hoping it would help someone. So I'm, so I'm glad it did. You know, you know, I think drugs are more prevalent now than they ever have been. It, you know, I, I live in. Um, uh, Sarasota, actually, in Florida, and Bradenton is one of the top cities for heroin addiction, which is, it's oh just crazy. I've, I've never seen anything like it, you know, and the o- opioids as well are, you know, a big problem. I, yeah. I've never well, seen well, yeah, I, yeah, Yeah, I think you're right. It's more prevalent than it's ever been. Right. And the thing is, it's no, there's no longer the, mis- the stigma right. that used to be associated with heroin addicts. I mean, they were the low because now the school teachers, there's mothers, fathers, That's right. you know, the high school valedictorian. I mean, it's anybody, That's right. and, and a lot of it comes off the opioids. These people get hooked, and then you know they they can't get any more drugs, and they go. I mean, pills, and they go out and they do they do heroin. So it's uh, very very sad, and you know, people are dying all over the place. It's like crazy, really it's like crazy, a, a, a tragic thing, and I've heard no plan. To help it now, in in the the thirties, oh, I think it was the thirties, when heroin came out. Initially, it was the wonder drug, and you could get it over the counter. Wow! Until they realized it was wow. it was just too, you know, too strong, and they just stopped it. Now I do not understand why they don't do that now. Just yeah. these opioids are just too. That's it, gone. They're they're no longer like they did with quaaludes. Right. Gone. You know, it's too dangerous, and uh, just stop it. You know why? Because the the drug uh, companies are too big. Yeah, that's it's it. That's the problem. They're they're running the show, and they can get away with anything, basically. But yeah, you know what? But why why don't they come up with a cure for cancer? You know, that's another thing. Are they holding that back? Do they really have the cure? You know, they making too much money. You know, that's that's another issue, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, God, God, I wish. I hope they get it because you know my sister died of cancer. People all around me are dying of cancer. Me too. It's just terrible. Me too. It is terrible. terrible thing. You know, well, I mean, what? it's just it's just every yeah. Oh, this one died. This is a cancer. Cancer. I know. Can- I mean, it's oh. like, oh my God, it's so so sad. Yeah, you would think they would find you know something. Well, what one good thing, and, and this is good for addicts too, is the cure for Hep C. With Horvoni, because that does work, and it and it that is oh yeah an honest, an honest to God cure for Hep C, which a lot of addicts have, a lot of people have from back in the yeah, 60s. I do. You know? I have it. Yeah, yeah. Have, have you have you got rid of it? Yeah, I started um, 20, 20 years ago. I started with uh, Chinese herbs for the liver. Uh, the whole, actually, all the, the organs and for my lungs, and boom, zero, and I, it's been zero for for years. Awesome. You know, not awesome. non detectable. Awesome. So I've been very, very lucky. Awesome. Cause, yeah, that that could get into some worse stuff. You know, down the down the pike. Oh, man. A lot of a lot of people don't even know they have it. You know. Yeah. I, oh God. A friend of mine that happened. He was a uh, a bodyguard, and he was doing a movie with uh, Stephen Baldwin, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, he, he he used to go to bed very early, and he, uh, you know, he, he he went and he stayed up too late, and he ended up in the hospital, pneumonia, and he was, he was dying from from uh, from Hep C. From Hep C, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, really, other, really the, the other thing that's it's ridiculous is the suicide rate. You know, and especially in the music oh industry. Oh my God! You know, Chris you Cornell, know, Chester you, Bennington. I started reading since. 
since then, you know, they have this whole, this transgender, you know, issues. And, of course, uh, people are going over the top with, you know, showing that they care so much that, you know, let them, you know, uh, let them go in all the bathrooms, uh, you know, in, in four-year-olds and three year You right. know, it's, you know, it's like, but to see how many of them kill themselves because they yeah. can't deal with, with, you know, so it's like, you know, a lot of people are, <clears throat> don't, you know, living... You have very, very, you know, hard lives. Luckily, the the world seems to be a little more accepting of those those kind of issues because they realize they're just people. That's right. That's right. But you know, in the music industry, have you ever run into the Illuminati? You know that a lot of people say it, it, it's true. A lot of people say it's it's false. That it doesn't exist. And then you, you, you hear all these ties in the music industry and. People dying, and you know, it's. Have you ever heard of anything in the music industry about them? Well, well, there are. Yeah, there are different things that you do that, 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 that come up, and um, you know, there was the the Scotty Brothers, you know, uh, Casablanca mm-hmm. records that was always touted as uh, uh, you know a connected uh, label and, and a lot of stuff. And then you have the people we worked with, Three Dog Night. Right. Uh, well, you know, one guy was a bookie, and um, and you know, and a manager, but he was a bookie. You heard him yelling <laughs> on the phone for collections and stuff so in the office. Yeah. And when our business manager wanted us to leave, you know, you need to leave this this stuff. He was shot. Really? He was shot. Our business wow. manager got shot, man. <laughs> you know, it was like and. Uh, you know, he lived, but you never saw him again. He went into hiding because right. he, you know, so who the hell they connect? Who they were connected with somebody? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Know, there's, there's so, the you know, uh, to, to, you know, and a lot of senses. It's a dirty business, um, right? But it's you know, the corporations that, that stay, the big ones. You know, they're corporations. They don't give a crap about anything. Right. But their money, their bottom line. Yep. Yeah, I talked to Tommy James about. You know, his connected label. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, actually, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. That his yeah, his thing was uh, had some connections and st- and stuff. He was, oh, yeah. he was really made great records. He did make good records back back in uh, your, your yeah, he, time, he, I guess. It started in the early '60s. I a guess. little before us, but, yeah, yeah. But even you know, our time, just a little before us. But then you know, he had a nice long career, so he was around when when we were. I always yeah. liked his music. Yep, good guy. Real okay, good you know guy. What? We too. gotta go. I'm sorry. I just realized that I'm taking Floyd to lunch, and he's got another appointment. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, 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 no. I was enjoying, uh, you know, talking. Actually, I kind of think you're cute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, I want to thank you very much for being on the show today, man, and for for all the great music hey, man, you've given you know, us. You're great. It's always nice. It's nice that you have me back, and I, re- you know, really appreciate it, my friend. At good luck on the Happy Together Tour 2018. We'll we'll circle back next year with you, okay? And the, and the, uh, the the album is awesome. The the album with you and your daughters is incredible. I gave it five stars. Oh, thank you. Very kind. Very kind. Okay. All right, Chuck. My best. You my best to you, boy. Take care, okay. man. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. For further information and concert dates for Chuck Negron and the Happy Together Tour. For further information and concert dates for Chuck Negron and the Happy Together Tour, visit www.chucknegron.com. To purchase Chuck's latest release, Negron Generations, visit www.chucknegron.com or amazon.com. And to purchase Chuck's new book, which features the evocative account of how Chuck Negron went from the height of worldwide fame and success to the depths of delusion, despair, and almost death, documented in hundreds of new photographs, in the 11 new chapters of Three Dog Nightmare, fourth edition, visit www.chucknegron.com or amazon.com, and that will officially be released on December 5th. Also follow Chuck on Facebook, www.facebook.com backslash Chuck Negron. Very special thanks to Bev Mosier, Vice President of Publicity for the 117 Entertainment Group, and of course... The great Doug and Don Newsome with VBS Radio for making it all happen every show. Join me bi-weekly at our new time and date, bi-weekly Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern on the Ray Shasho Show. 
If you have comments or suggestions or would like to be a guest on the Ray Shasho Show, email us at raypublicityworksagency.com. Don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, The True Story of a Neglected American Family in the Wacky Family Business, or the second edition entitled Wacky Shenanigans on F Street, Proud to be Politically Incorrect in Washington, D.C., available now at Amazon.com. You'll live it. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com, specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Join Ray Shasho every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on PBS Radio Station 1.